Hi everyone, and welcome to our last screencast for Unit 1. Today we're going to be talking about buffers. Now we know that living systems prefer to keep their pH between about 6 and 8. Because we're mostly made of water as living things, the pH level, how acidic or how basic we are, is going to affect all the reactions that happen in our body and thus it's going to affect our health. If you have a pH imbalance, if you have a pH imbalance for a really long time, the body, so your body has all these regulatory mechanisms to help balance the pH and it does that by removing as many acids from the body as it can. But sometimes that's not enough and the pH does become too acidic or too basic and cells will really just get poisoned by their own toxic waste and die. Just like acid rain can destroy a forest, if your blood is too acidic it can eat through body tissues like veins and arteries and it'll corrode everything and put holes in them. So if left unchecked an, an imbalanced pH will interrupt all sorts of things in your body, everything from the, your beating heart to how your brain fires. And lots of times this will go unnoticed and undetected for quite a while, but if it progresses it can lead to many different degenerative diseases. So for example, heart disease, cancer cells actually really love acidic pH environments, and so if you have an acidic pH it will be more likely that you will get cancer. If you have an acidic pH for a long time, another really interesting thing it does is it can trigger an insulin sensitivity. Basically what that means is more insulin is, is released and your body will grab onto every single calorie it can and turn it into fat. And it's no surprise then that acidic pHs are also related to diabetes. In humans, our blood pH, we try to keep it around about 7.46, that's slightly basic, that's considered optimal, and like I say, our bodies have all these different mechanisms to try to keep it at about 7.46. And many other tissues in your body um, like a different pH. The, the stomach enjoys a pH of about 2.5, the vagina needs a very acidic pH, to ward off invaders, maintaining a different pH in different parts of the body. And mostly it does that through buffers. So we talked in the last screencast about adding strong acids to water. If you add a strong acid to water, the pH changes drastically. And that's because when the acids are released into the water, they release hydrogen ions when they dissociate from their partners. And that's because when you release acids into water, as we talked about HCl last day, as soon as it hits the water it will dissociate into hydrogen ions and whatever else that hydrogen ion is attached to in an acid. More hydrogen ions gives you a more acidic solution and the pH will drop drastically. What a buffer is, is it's a chemical that can resist the pH from changing. And so if a buffer is in an acidic solution, the buffer will actually take those extra hydrogen ions and absorb them. So a buffer can absorb hydrogen ions. If you have a really strong acidic solution, there are too many hydrogen ions in that solution. And so if we add a strong acid solution to a solution that has a buffer, the buffer will actually attract the hydrogen ions to it and stick the hydrogen ions on to itself, thus removing them from the solution. So if you have a negative buffer, and an example of that is CO3, negative 2, it has a negative charge, and that negative charge will be attracted to the positive charge of the hydrogen. And in that way, because opposites attract, the negative CO3 um, carbonate will be attracted to the hydrogen ion and will stick it onto itself to become HCO3, hydrogen carbonate, and it will remove that hydrogen ion from the solution. Please notice that the charge of the carbonate to negative becomes a charge of negative one because that positive hydrogen has been attached to it. So you're one less negative than you used to be. So when hydrogen ions um, are absorbed by a buffer, the pH of the solution won't change even if you add an acid. Now, ultimately, if you had take a strong base like sodium hydroxide and you add it to water and there's no buffer available, what happens is the sodium hydroxide will dissociate as soon as it touches the water and the NaOH will become separate. You'll have some sodium, which is Na+, and some hydroxide, which is OH negative. Now, the OH negative in that solution, we know, will drive the pH up. So basic solutions will increase the pH and a basic 
solution is also called an alkaline solution. We know basic solutions increase the pH because they remove hydrogen ions from the solution. Now if you don't want that to happen, you need to add a buffer because buffers resist those changes in pH. So if you have a basic solution, what a buffer will do is it will give hydrogen ions to the base and what happens is when you give hydrogen ions to the base, which is an OH, a hydroxide ion, the hydrogen and the hydroxide ion will make water. And we know that water is neutral. So a buffer will give out hydrogen ions to a base to turn it into water and make sure that the solution doesn't change the pH. So if you have a strong base solution, there's too many hydroxide ions. If we add a strong base to a solution with a buffer, the buffer gives away hydrogen ions to turn the base into water. So here in this case, we're using the form of the buffer that has the most hydrogen ions. It has a lot of hydrogen ions to give away to the hydroxide ion. And that hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion will turn into water. And you'll notice that the H2CO3, because it's lost one hydrogen ion, becomes HCO3, and now it's got a one negative. It's lost one positive hydrogen ion and is now one more negative than it used to be. So there's different forms of every single buffer. If you have a buffer in a basic solution, it gives away hydrogen ions to turn the hydroxide ions into water. So buffers can donate or release hydrogen ions in a basic solution. So like I said, a buffer usually has three or more versions of itself. If we take a look at the buffer we've been talking about, you've got H2CO3, HCO3 1 negative, and CO3 2 negative. These are the three different forms of the buffer. So let's talk first about what happens when you've got an acidic solution. The form of the buffer that you're going to be working with first is the buffer that has the most negative charges because it's going to be the most attractive to the hydrogen ions in an acidic solution. You'll see that CO3 2 negative grabs onto one hydrogen ion and becomes HCO3 1 negative. HCO3 1 negative is still negative so it can still attract one more hydrogen to become H2CO3. You'll notice that it doesn't have any more negative charges, so it is now no longer attracted to any of the hydrogen ions in an acidic solution. We call that overloaded because past that point, the pH is going to start changing. Even though this buffer prevented any pH changes up till this point, if you add any more acid past that point, the buffer will change. So this is the direction in which a buffer system will move in an acidic solution. Now if you're in a basic solution, you're going to start with the form of the buffer that has the most hydrogens to give away. So H2CO3, if you put a base into that buffer system, it will give away hydrogen ions so they'll be turned into water. And H2CO3 becomes HCO3 1 negative. Now it still has a hydrogen to give away, so it'll give that hydrogen away to a base as well. That will turn into the neutral water again and now because it's lost another hydrogen ion it becomes CO3 2 negative. Again it has no more hydrogens to give away and so we call this form of the buffer overloaded in a basic system because it can't prevent pH changes anymore. So in a basic solution the buffer system will move from the direction of lots of hydrogens to lots of negatives. So a buffer can be overloaded if there's too much acid or too much base. If you keep adding acids or bases, the pH will definitely start to change. So in conclusion, a buffer can either donate hydrogens, give them away, or it can accept hydrogen ions in acidic solutions. The most important buffer that we have in our bodies is the bicarbonate ion, and we find that in the blood, and it's doing this all the time, giving away hydrogens, taking hydrogens. So here is the bicarbonate ion, HCO3 negative, and that's what we've been talking about throughout this screencast. Make sure you come to class with all your hot questions.